<laughs> Yo, what's going on? You know what it is. This is what's crazy. The guy behind the camera, it's a white guy. But you know he got soul. You know I got soul. You know you got soul.com. You know what it is. No, what is it? You know. Yeah, you got it, right? That was it. I did? Yeah. Oh, well, that's what it is. How about your boy? See, I got him to speak. That's a white guy right there. <laughs> and he got soul. He knows music. The site is crazy. It's all love. All right, from next. Signing out. All right, so, um, you know, first of all, catch us up just on what you've been up to, you know, what's going on with you right now. Just, you know, writing for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took a break for me. I just had to figure out other ways to be prosperous without music. So I got the lounge opening in Atlanta. Um, and right now, I had a music that came out. It's called Return to Voice. Part two is 90% done. And we're shooting videos probably for like five or six hours records. So I've been slowly learning the viral media yeah. part of entertainment now. Before mm-hmm. it was, it just had to be a hot record and you had to have talent. Yeah. But look, now you can have none of that. You have a lot of hits on your YouTube, a lot of followers on Twitter, and you can get a deal or you can get some spins. I'm really not used to that. You know, I'm 34, I've been in the game for almost 15 years. And for me, it's been more about the music. So I'm trying to find a happy medium between still being about the music and still doing what I need to do virally. So my management, my management and uh, their team doing magazine interviews and different things like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be honest, I'm a boring cat. Like, yeah. You think the most industry cats is like to go out. And I'm going to be a co-owner of it. I probably will hardly be there because that's not me. I'm in the bed by 10.30. The music fire is the first 48. Yeah. kind of boring mm. when it comes to my life outside of music. Um, so it's, I'm uncomfortable doing all these things that you have to do nowadays, but I'm slowly acclimating myself into the position. Yeah, cool. Talk about something you mentioned. You know, you mentioned that people these days in R&B just have a look, have an image. And it's kind of pushing real singers like yourself to the side, which is unfortunate. You know, it's crazy because it's not real. I can go overseas, like I, I've done for you know years, to perform and actually make more than a lot of these artists that are, you know, on the radio over here. I a lot of this music, I, and I can't really blame the artists because you know it's labels. That's one reason that we asked to be released from our our, our deal and not drop because we refuse to put out records that last three months. We have those songs that. You hear right now that you know you sell a little bit, you'll be at a tour for a couple of months for the summer, and then all of a sudden you don't hear the record again. Mm-hmm. You know, luckily we've been blessed to have some of the biggest records, you know, in you know, the last 20 years. Yeah. So yeah. whether it's something that I, I wrote for somebody like the Jaheim Records, or whether it's something that I wrote and performed with, you know, my group next, I feel sorry for a lot of the artists nowadays because when it comes time and they have to slow down and have to really depend on touring yep. for a while, what are they going to say? Mm-hmm. Because the records that they have won't be relevant anymore. My cousin is Philip Bailey from Earth, Wind & Fire. And I want to be like that. I yeah. want to be able to tour forever. You know, of course, I want to be able to put out more music. And, and relevance to me is being on somebody's mind. I, mean, I just walked around the city all day and probably a couple hundred people were like, all right, all right. Yeah. And there's cats that probably were 10 and 11 maybe eight or nine when I first came out. But they know me because my music transcends generations. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to continue to do. Yeah, cool. Talk about Next now. I mean, you're on stage, you mentioned you're back with Next. You know, what was Never this? Never Left. Never Left, okay. Never <laughs> there's, there's always been a turmoil with the yeah. group because I was the baby. And it's, it's hard when I'm the youngest and all of a sudden the public kind of thrust me as a quote-unquote lead singer, which I'm not. Yeah. Um, but I can understand where, you know, maybe I'm doing a record with Tupac or Deborah Cobb or The Best Man. And my group members are, you know, are sitting there like, let's work. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, being young, I didn't know how to juggle this. You're juggling egos, all of us. Yeah. We're men. Um, and I had to learn. And secondly, you know, with the original three is back together. It's yeah. me, Tilo, and Tweet. Okay. Tweet left for a while and he said he had to grow. He had to humble himself and grow. And the same thing with all of us. We argue, but I look at the Rolling Stones, they can probably fist fight and get on stage and make a million dollars. Why is it that black groups can't do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to be the next black group that you're like, I ain't ever going to come back out. We've started working on a new album. It's called okay. Music 101. It'll come out after my album. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're taking our time. If you look at a lot of groups, they have to, okay, you look at a lot of urban groups, they have to put out an album every 
like six months, nine months. Yeah. Hot acts put out an album every four to five years because they can tour up that same album. Yeah. And luckily we can too. I'm about to go to Liberia. You know, it's got back from Australia. You know, internationally it's just that's where it's at right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you did mention that you're still releasing your another solo album. Let's talk about that. Well, I had a whole album done. But these leakers from Germany, yeah. my goodness, they find ways. You get an email from your mom's email address and click on it in your computer. So I've learned to protect my catalog. And it wasn't just me. They would get producers. And what hurt me the most was a lot of producers thought I was leaking records so I could get hurt. Mm. I'm like, why would I cut into my income stream and yeah. to get a little leak out? But it was happening to everybody. I thought I was talking to some other artists, but... I got an album It's 90% done It's called Minnesota Nights Okay Because there are times That I don't want to be uh, I, I was in a funeral yesterday Yeah My mentor died uh, A couple weeks ago mm-hmm. And uh, 40 years old Left two kids And I didn't want to be here To be honest um, It really wasn't any income For me to be here It was really A friend of mine Is throwing this I'll come host And maybe do one song But the music Is so powerful You want to get up there And put on the show Yeah There's a crowd here Um Minnesota Nights is when I was younger I contemplated suicide and every night I would go to sleep I would go sneak a beer out of the refrigerator or something stupid and down this I would go to sleep and I'd have my headphones on listening to you know boys to men after seven and I just dreamed of making it mm-hmm. and whenever I become complacent I think of those Minnesota Nights yeah. when I laid in that twin size bed yeah. that was 20 years older than me because me and my brother got beds from my mom and my uncle they had when they were kids mm-hmm. so I think back to that time and it, it keeps me focused yeah okay now talk to me a little bit more I mean you, you mentioned the tragedy you've been through recently and I think a lot of fans don't realize the human element that you know behind an artist you mentioned you didn't even want to come here to perform but you, you know as an artist you got to go up there you got to act like you're happy you got to smile take pictures how do you you know balance that and even though inside you're probably it's probably killing you because you realize it's bigger than you to be honest I'm actually more comfortable on stage than I am right yeah. Um, I can forget about every and anything. When I'm, in the, when I'm on stage, I don't even see the audience half the time. I close my eyes and imagine I'm in the shower naked, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Really. Yeah. I imagine I'm anywhere but where I'm at. And music has always been an outlet. I mean, a lot of songs that I've written or performed, people listen to them and take them to another place. But before it can take them, it has to take me. I, yeah. That's how I know that it's good enough. Yeah. You get past the point where you go, it sounds good I like how I sound on this song it has to be bigger than that mm-hmm. and I'm, I've matured and learned that so now music is actually my album yeah. you know it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to get paid to do something that I'm proud to do for the yeah alright cool talk about your writing you know you mentioned writing for other artists so you know what's your process because I love to hear a writer's process when they put a song together well it depends like when I wrote um, Jamie Foxx's record Forecast mm-hmm. I listened to his first album really wanted to um, he was around when I did my solo I was in the studio every day telling jokes he invited me to Will Smith's house and became really cool and I actually wrote the record for him two years before but the label didn't want him to record it yeah. he called me like I would so a year and a half passed and I finally reached out to him and was like if you don't want the record it's cool you're still my guy mm-hmm. he was like no I'm actually shooting Miami Vice right now we're flying from whatever country they're in I'll stop in Minnesota, pick you up. Yeah. You come to Miami. I can't do that. I had to go to graduation. I was like, but right after the graduation, I come down to Miami. So I come down there and uh, we record the record and we put it on the album. Yeah. And the funniest thing is, I've never heard another artist that I've written for perform a song I've written live. Jaheen, Lloyd, Luther, Usher, nobody. I was at a concert in uh, Atlanta. He's at the Fox Theater. He started singing my song. <laughs> and I started singing loud as hell, not even realizing it was just feeling so good. Yeah. And he's like, shh. Then he looks at me, he's like, like, let me sing. <laughs> Sees me, breaks the music down, points to me, and tells the audience, all real, all Oh, that's record. so cool. Give it up, all real. Here's one of the highlights of my career. Yeah, that's so cool. Are you currently, you know, writing for any other artists right now or just focusing on next? Well, I'm focusing on my project as well as next and, and the new mixtape. Um, artists come to me for records. I'm, I'm going to be working with Mila next week because she's down in, in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, I, what I hate, well, it's been a humbling experience writing for a lot of artists that I feel like vocally I'm, I might be on another level. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dumb down. Yeah, yeah. That's not a problem. So. Yeah. 
hearing it, but it really did humble me as an artist. The hardest part is when I write a record and I hold it for an artist that I consider a friend, mm -hmm. and they don't use it. Oh. It happened with Lloyd. I did two records I did with The Runners and uh, Cool and Dre, and I called them like a year ago on my birthday. He thought I was calling them about the songs. I still want to use them songs. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm calling you on my birthday when you come to a party. He's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm in Australia, but I'll be back tomorrow. So I was like, cool. So I hadn't heard anything else about it. So, I, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't even have charged. Because mm -hmm. he's like, I, I love his spirit. He's a really good cat. But the album came out. I went and bought it. My record's going on. Yeah. So you get sensitive with your material that you hold for artists, but you also realize there's a lot of industry talk every day. Mm -hmm. and it could be the people around that artist. Yeah. I mean, um... A lot of fans don't realize that stuff that goes on behind the scenes, you know. Does that happen often? And do you, you know, do you take that kind of thing personal? Like, how do you deal it's, with that? It's hard not to because I'm a man of first. This industry doesn't define me. Yeah. Um, there's times that you get angry. And the funny thing is me and my manager are both Aries. Yeah. And I wear my emotions on my sleeve. He knows how. He has an even temperament, so he balances me out. There are times I overreact. Mm-hmm. I'm learning to just things work themselves out somehow. Yeah, yeah. So I'm learning to relax now because if I did, well, I'd probably yeah. have an aneurysm or something. <laughs> Okay, and one last question. You know, you mentioned on stage, sometimes people stop you on the street and say, yo, you're still singing, you're still recording. You know, you haven't had an album with next since, like, early 2000s. You know, your solo album was early 2000s. So has it been kind of tough to kind of step out of the spotlight a little bit and, you know, do the writing for other artists and not be seen on that, that major level like you're... Truthfully, no, because... For some reason, out of all the groups that were out when we came out, we're the least known urban-wise. But if you really look, we only had three albums out. But we were much more MTV than BET. Mm -hmm. So the urban audience, when, when I ask people, what's your favorite group of the 90s or whatever, the late 90s, they'll say, Jack and Edge yeah. Drew Hill, yeah. which are, I love all those groups. Let me mention us. Yeah, we had some of the biggest records in history at that time. Mm. But it was because we were playing in other countries. Yeah. And we were on pop stations. Clyde took us somewhere else. I used to hate how we had to dress. We, used to, we couldn't wear the fly gear. We yeah. didn't have a rapper coming in on our songs. Mm -hmm. So, And we also didn't have Jermaine Dupri or Puff coming out of the video. <laughs> we didn't have that. You yeah. know, KG, who I love like a brother was there but that was when Naughty was kind of and they were they don't get the credit they deserve they were even on the pop side you don't think of them when you think of hip hop yet they had some of the biggest yeah. in hip hop history so for us it's almost hurt us so I'm used to people not giving us the credit that's due and it used to bother me being younger but now it's much more lucrative to sit in the background and yeah. have to deal with the headache and the funny thing is people still notice me people still mm -hmm. show me love it is offensive when they go you're still singing because there's a shower and there's a bathroom with towel that's yeah. <laughs> acoustically silent where it's great I'm going to be singing regardless mm, cool and uh, anything you'd like to add? I love your site I like that you keep it positive appreciate it my message to the leakers is quit sending me emails I know that it's you I'm glad you like my music but I gotta eat thank you <laughs>